Hello everyone. So today we're going to talk about proving triangles congruent. Now to prove triangles congruent, you also always must have three things congruent to show they're congruent to each other. So the first way to prove it is by SSS, which stands for side, side, side. And that says if three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of a second triangle, then the two triangles are congruent to each other. So let's look at the two triangles I have here on the screen. Um, if you look, side AB is congruent to side DE, side AC is congruent to side DF, and side BC is congruent to, to side EF. So as you see, we have side, 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 so that means I can say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. All right, the next way is called side angle side, SAS. This says that if two sides and the included angles of one triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angles of an, a second triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. Well, what do I mean by included angle? I mean this angle that is between the two congruent sides. Like where the two congruent sides meet, that angle is my included angle. So I can show on my picture, AB is congruent to DE, Angle A is congruent to angle D, and side AC is congruent to side DF. So I have SAS, a side congruent, an angle congruent, and another side congruent, where the angle is between those two sides. Then I can say triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. All right, now let's look at HL, which stands for hypotenuse leg. So if the hypotenuse and a leg of a right triangle are congruent to the hypotenuse and leg of a second right triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. Now, I know what you're thinking. She just said that you needed three things congruent in order to say that two triangles are congruent. But actually, there's like a, quote, hidden congruence here, and it's the right triangle. They both have to have a right angle. They both have to be right triangles in order to use hypotenuse leg. And then we can show our hypotenuse, AB congruent to DE, and one of my legs, CB is congruent to FE. Either of my legs can be congruent. I just need one hypotenuse, one leg, and of course, a right triangle. So then I can say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. All right, now we have ASA, or angle side angle. If two sides and the included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and the included side of a second triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. Now here, we just talked about included angle. Let's talk about included side. So what I mean by included side is the side that both of my angles are touching. We couldn't use this side or this side because they are touching only one of the angles. To be the included side, they must touch both of my angles. So I can see that angle A is congruent to angle D. Side AC is congruent to side DF and angle C is congruent to angle F. So that gives me angle side angle, so I can say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. Now let's look at angle angle side. So angle angle side says that if two angles and a non-included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and the corresponding non-included side of a second triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. So we have two angles in a row and then a side that is not between them. So we can say angle A is congruent to angle D, angle C is congruent to angle F, and side BC is congruent to side EF. So this shows that we have two congruent triangles. So if ABC, then, I mean, sorry, then triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. All right, so let's give this problem a, a try. Decide whether the congruent statement is true and explain your reasoning. So they're saying that triangle DFG is congruent to triangle HJK. Now look at what we have. We have right angles and we have three congruent sides. So we could say that FG is congruent to HI. Oh, that should say... That should say JK, so sorry. So FG is congruent to JK. DG is congruent to HK, and FD is congruent to JH. So we could say that this is true by side, side, side. Now let's look. Is there another way to prove these are congruent? Well, yes, we have these right angles right here, and we have a leg and a hypotenuse that are congruent. So we could also say these two triangles are congruent by hypotenuse leg. Now let's look at another one. 
triangle ACB is congruent to triangle CAD. Well, we see that we have two sevens that we can mark congruent. We have a nine in the middle that's reflexive, but what do we have out here? We have a three and a four. So two of our sides are not congruent to each other. So if AB is not equal to CD, then we can't say that these triangles are congruent. So this is false, not true. And last one, decide whether the congruent statement is true and explain your reasoning. All right, so take a look at what we have. We have two sides and an angle. So I know what you've been thinking this whole time. We're talking about three-letter words spelled with A and S. You're thinking of bad cuss words in your head right now. You better not be writing bad cuss words on our test. If you write it forwards, if you write it backwards, if you write it upside down, we're all going to look at you like you're dumb, and we're going to make fun of you. So don't do it. So on this one, it's not the bad word. It's actually hypotenuse leg, because these two triangles are both right triangles. T, uh, TP and TS are our hypotenuses, and PQ and SR are our legs. So we could say this is true by hypotenuse leg. All right, so next we're going to begin proofs. For level, these are all the implied statements that we're going to use for your upcoming proofs. For pre-AP, you have um, the orange sheets that we already taped in our journals at the beginning of the year. And level, you'll be receiving these in blue sheets um, next time in class. So you don't have to write them down right now. And then I want you to get out the worksheet that we gave to you in class. I'm going to do two of the problems with you. So I'm going to start with number one. So I have put some extra things on mine. Yours is just blank for right now. And I'm going to show you how to prove that these two triangles are congruent. And I'm going to show you using a flow chart and using a two-column proof. So it tells us in the given that angle ABD is congruent to angle CDB and that AB is congruent to CD, and they want us to prove that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDB. So the first thing you should always do is label your picture. So I'm going to label that ABD is congruent to CDB, and then I'm going to mark my opposite sides congruent, AB congruent to CD, just like they gave me in the given, and then I see across the middle that BD is laying on top of itself. So BD is congruent to BD by the reflexive property. So when you're writing proofs, after you draw on your picture, you should write out your givens. So um, when we did the statements before, when we tried the algebra proofs, the first thing we wrote in our two-column proof was the given. So I wrote it down here on the right, and then in my flowchart proof, I wrote my statement, angle B ABC congruent to angle CDB, I drew a line, and then under it, I wrote that it was given. So I wrote my statement over reason, like I would write statement left, reason right, on my flowchart proof. I mean, sorry, on my two-column proof. Then the second thing I should write down is my next given, that AB is congruent to CD, and that's given. And then the last thing I drew on my picture was that I had the reflexive line in the middle, BD is congruent to DB, by the reflexive property of congruence. It's important that you put POC, because we're talking about congruence, not E for equality. And then if we see, we have two sides and an angle between them. So we have S, A, S. So we can say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDB, by side, angle, side. So now you've finished your first geometric proof. Now let's step it up a little bit. Flip um, over to number four. We're going to try this one together. I haven't drawn out the flowchart proof. I've, I've drawn in the um, two-column proof already, and we're going to fill it out, and I'm going to draw my flowchart proof as I go. So this one gives us that BD is perpendicular to AD, and that D is the midpoint of AD. They want us to prove that triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CBD. So first, I'm going to mark that since D is my midpoint, I know that AD and DC are going to be congruent to each other. And also, if BD and AD are perpendicular, then that means I have a right angle there. And then again, I'm going to notice that I have my reflexive line in the middle. BD is congruent to BD. So I'm going to start by writing in my givens. So BD perpendicular to AD, that was given, and D is the midpoint, that was given. I like flowchart proofs better because I can write 
my givens up at the top because when I do my um, two column proof I want my givens and then the two things I bring from it and then my midpoint given and the one thing I will bring from that. Uh, back to the flow chart, the third thing that I noticed was that we have the reflexive property of congruence again and so I'm going to put that up here at the top and down here in my flow chart proof. Now that I have my givens and my reflexive property up across the top, I'm going to start with my first one and follow it and see what happens from there. So think about BD is perpendicular to AD. Well, when we have perpendicular lines, that means we have right angles. So angle BDA and BDC are right angles, and that's just by the definition of right angles. And then we know that angle BDA is congruent to BDC because all right angles are congruent. We know they all mean 90 degrees. So now let's look back at D as the midpoint. Well, what did we mark on our picture when we wrote that D was the midpoint? Well, we wrote that AD was congruent to CD because we know that if you have a midpoint, then that gives you two congruent segments. So now I have a side, an angle, and a side. So that means I can use these three. So you see I've drawn my arrows. They all go down to this box. I can use side, angle, side to show that ABD is congruent to triangle CBD. All right, so that's everything I have for you. See you in class.